truly believe that self-care and creativity expand each other. Arriving with consciousness into how we treat and speak to ourselves, what and how we feed our body, mind and soul, and the rhythms with the ones we move through our life are in deep connection to our desire to create and dive deep into the mystery of inspiration. In a world where distraction and overproductivity may seem like the norm or even the only way to move forth, I believe that our relationship to self-care isn't a waste of time, but rather part of how we can dance in between both spaces, finding there isn't a real separateness in between them, arriving into the realization that self-care and creativity nourish and expand each other, working in an infinite reciprocal relationship. When I speak about self-care, I mean becoming honest with what it is that we need right now in order to arrive at a nourished version of ourselves today. Right now, are we needing more rest, more time to relax and reconnect from within? Or maybe what these times ask from us is becoming more disciplined with how we set our boundaries truly showing up to a schedule and putting in the necessary work to make our projects come to fruition. And no matter which type of self-care we need at the moment, when we stop paying attention to it, we can often arrive in a space of feeling stuck, uninspired, or even burned out. So how do we dance in between the balance of these two practices? Don't get me wrong, I believe having non-creative times is a necessary part of our cycles. But I also believe that exploring a more healthy relationship with both our own needs and keeping the creative spark alive can deepen our journey, both on a personal and artistic level. When self-care is doing more, setting boundaries. I find it very important to set boundaries in between my work and my life, even though they are very intertwined. Setting up and sticking to a specific work schedule goes a very long way. My morning practice is important to me, so setting up my schedule in order to do my morning routine and have breakfast are a must. I know I will clock into work at 10 a.m. and clock out in between 6 or 7 with a 30-minute lunch break each day. So sticking to the schedule helps me organize myself and use my time in a more efficient way. In my work, I wear lots of hats, so I have specific days for specific tasks. Days for emails and social media, days for editing videos, days to learn how to run a small business, days to pack orders, and days fully devoted to painting, and so much more. Getting rid of distractions is also a big one for me, so I often uninstall distracting apps from my phone, and my loved ones already know I won't be available in between my work hours. So creating a routine includes having a start and finish time. Also knowing I wear different hats and accepting everything takes its own time. Organizing my week ahead of time and by giving all my tasks specific days and times, it becomes easier to fully drop in instead of getting overwhelmed with not even knowing how to start. Before we continue with today's vlog, I just wanted to say thank you to Squarespace for sponsoring today's video. Squarespace has been the virtual home of my website, art portfolio, web shop, email campaigns, and member area since 2018, and I cannot recommend them enough. 
I've been learning about Squarespace new offering, Design Intelligence, where award-winning human template designs are complemented by AI services to help you build a beautiful and personalized website and web shop for your and your brand's needs. Squarespace and I are partnering up to offer you a two-week free trial, and once you're ready to launch, the code CAROAREVALO gets you 10% off your first purchase of a website or domain with them. Thank you so much Squarespace for sponsoring this video and my channel. And my channel! <laughs> when self-care is doing less. Mindfulness practices are the key which help me stay on top of my mental health and remember why I love life while dropping deeper into myself. I've shared so much on why yoga and meditation have become dear practices for me this past decade and practices I show up to daily. A simple 10-minute meditation a day truly can go a long way towards mental health and our ability to process information and come back to the center, especially in a world that feels more dystopic by the minute. Meditating with non-human kin is also one of my favorite ways to commune and learn from nature. Ceremony can look in many ways, and some of my current favorite practices are going outdoors with a cup of plants and meditating with them in silence. I share much more on this on my online container, Whispers of the Heart. Being outdoors. I can't share enough about how spending time in nature, especially in silence and alone, can rewire our nervous system. And I say I can't share enough because I believe it is truly ineffable how simple yet powerful having nature strolls can shift so much within us. Lastly, I believe that rest is also about the non-doing beauty of life, making time to do nothing, having days with no plans, no agendas, no to-dos. This is something I'm still learning how to do, and a key aspect of it has been learning how to be more gentle with myself while I relearn stillness. Dropping fully into your art practice. One of the most magical journeys we can take is the journey of navigating into our own inner world and seeing what is ready to come out from there. I was recently listening to an interview by Natalia Lafourcade where she talks about the importance of having the guts to go inside your own mountain, your life and creative mountain. It can be scary, a very scary mountain, but once inside, it can be fully mesmerizing everything we get to explore and discover both from ourselves and the world. Just as we devote ourselves to balancing our nervous system, commune with nature, and open our hearts to ourselves, I believe it is important to commit to your own artistic practices and truly learn what is inside our personal mountain. Getting lost to then find ourselves back a million times along the journey. And don't even get me started in the importance to devote, to learn, perfect, and research more in terms of our own artistic abilities. This is a topic I will definitely be sharing more about in the upcoming months because it's what I am living fully at this moment. Thank you so much for tuning into today's video. I would love to hear some of the ways you find balance between art and self-care. Pretty please like and share this video and subscribe to my channel if you like what you see. Thank you Squarespace for sponsoring today's video. May you have a beautiful time diving into your own creative mountain. Goodbye!